Well, that's not the kind of video you normally get at the introduction of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Hi, I'm Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 68 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. See, doesn't that make you feel better? We're back to the good old fashioned way of doing things. So this week, I am reviewing some software that allows you to create those specific kinds of gorgeous videos right on your AGA Amiga. You can create videos in 320 by 200, 640 by 200 uh, in, in beautiful AGA graphics. This software was created by Marcus Shordan and it uses the old CDXL technology that was used and created by Commodore for the CDTV, and it's taken it to the extreme. Now, a lot of you may remember a year or so ago, I used to create Ham6 and MPEG videos of my shows, and I'd put them up on AmyNet for you to download for your own Amiga. But then somehow the videos got larger uh, I mean, at the beginning, when they were 10 minutes, they were pretty small, but I don't know how. Somehow they got bigger. I, you got me. Ask that guy. But can we do better than that AVI to HV software that I've been using for so long? Because I love the software. I think it does a great job. The answer is a resounding yes. And if the answer was no, this would be a really short video. Now, CDXL was a format that was created by Commodore back in the early 90s for the CDTV for playing back full motion video right off a of single speed CD. And then later on, they upgraded it for the CDTV at the whopping double speed. It did a pretty good job, but considering it was stuck with a 68,000 processor and about 150 kilobyte per second data transfer at best, if the wind is flowing from the, blowing from the east maybe. It did a fine job for the day, but the technology was built into it to be much more. And Marcus took advantage of this technology built into it and created the AGA Blaster software. AGA Blaster uses CDXL as its core, but now it can record in full 256 color AGA images with synchronized audio. And the way you create these, you create them under Linux at this point in time. And I'll go in more into that in a moment. Um, the way you create these is it uses FFmpeg, which is a software program I've talked about before. It's available on Linux. It's available on Windows. There's even a version available for the Amiga, but it's a little bit older. And that software can convert from just about any video or audio format to any other format. It's incredibly powerful, 100% command line based. Well, his AGA convert software, what that does is it works as a front end for FFmpeg. It takes an MP4 video or another video file format and it converts it into a series of PNG files, literally a series of, of individual files. And then it extracts all the audio out as an 8-bit WAV file, anywhere from about 11,250 hertz up to 28,000 hertz that the Paula can handle in full stereo. And it takes these and automatically squishes them back together into a CDXL format with synchronized audio that just, the quality just knocks your socks off. Before we get into the software itself and how to set it up, let's take a look at some of the results that we can get with the software. We already saw one video at the beginning of the screen. Uh, I didn't do that one, Marcus converted that one, but everything else you're gonna see are things that I converted myself. Let's look at a little clip of our friend Mad Pete. Is a condition of the mind that is contracted after binge watching episodes of the excellent YouTube channel, the 10 minute Amiga Retrocast, or 10 Mark as it's also known. And yet for some reason, the episodes seem to last 43 minutes. They, 43, 43 minutes? I digress. This was done in 320 by 200 in 256 colors, 28 hertz audio. And it's just perfect. Playback is flawless on the Amiga. It just looks gorgeous. Now, I'm doing this on my Amiga 4000, which as you probably know is an 060 running at 66 megahertz, 140 megs of RAM, 
There goes Doug blathering on about his Amiga 4000 again. But it will still run just fine on my Amiga 1200, and that's an 040 40 megahertz, and it'll still do a good job on like an 030. Now, if all you have is an Amiga 1200 with maybe eight megs of RAM and a, the built-in hard drive, it'll still play. You're just gonna, going to wanna maybe reduce the, the colors, maybe reduce the video quality a little bit, bring the audio quality down a little bit so it plays back fine on yours. But if you got a little accelerator in there, go to town. How do we create these awesome videos? Well, in some ways it's complicated, in some ways it's pretty straightforward. The front end is all Linux based, and that's simply because that's what Marcus uses. He doesn't use Windows 10, so he created it in the operating system he uses. So does that mean that us Windows users are completely hosed and we can't do this? Nay, nay. Microsoft, in their infinite wisdom, has released an Ubuntu terminal for Windows 10, totally and completely free, that lets you run most uh, Linux applications, uh, command line based, right in Windows 10. And it works pretty good with this software, with some caveats. Now figure, all things considered, this setup of Ubuntu and getting everything rolling should take you less than an hour. I'm of course gonna do some shortcuts in here. I'm gonna show you how to do it, but I'm gonna crop out all the, you know, gee, let's wait 15 minutes for a file to download type of thing. Now, full disclosure here, I'm a Windows guy. In my day-to-day -day job, I sell Windows machines. I support Windows machines. I've done it for 25 years. And Windows 10 is pretty good. But where we're gonna go next, which is the Microsoft App Store, is a cesspool of hot, stinking garbage. I have yet to find any app that Microsoft has put out on their App Store that is worth a nickel. There, I said it. Let's switch over to the Windows PC and take a look at what we have to do next. Let's start in the Windows App Store. So we're going to go into here and we're going to do a search for Ubuntu. U-B-U-N-T-U. -U. And what we're going to find are three different versions. You can ignore this 20.04, ignore, and get this Ubuntu app here. Now, I already have it installed, so it just gives me the option to launch, but you're gonna have the option to install. It'll probably take about five or 10 minutes to install because it has to do a few things in the background. Once it's installed, you can launch it by going to your start menu and typing Ubuntu, and then I recommend putting it in your taskbar by right-clicking it and telling it to uh, pin it to your taskbar so it's easy to find. Now I also recommend, while we're in Windows here and waiting for Ubuntu to install, just go ahead and go to Marcus's website and download his AGA Blaster software. And I will have the link in the description for that, but you're basically gonna want to, uh, to download this because you're gonna wanna bring it over to your Amiga. And you want to download the AGA Convert software. AGA Convert, you're going to find right here, AGA Convert. And what you want to do when you download this, you want to download it someplace where it's easy to find. Your standard Windows download folder is kind of a convoluted file path. And so you, it may take a little bit to type that into Linux like we're going to have to do. So maybe just create a new little folder. Like in my case, I created one on the C drive, just called it uh, downloads so it's real easy to find and I just put the file right in there. Now when you first launch the Ubuntu terminal it's going to take a couple minutes to install some things in the background so just be patient as it installs it and it will probably ask for your Windows password to finish installing things. After a moment you'll come to a prompt like this with your name and then the name of your computer here and you're actually at the Ubuntu prompt. Now we need to add a few pieces of software and we need to do that by telling it to look in the Ubuntu repository of software. So we type in this command, sudo add-apt-repository. 
repository space universe. Now make sure all of your capitalization is correct because unlike superior operating systems like Amiga OS, uh, Linux is case sensitive. Now it's going to ask you for your password again and no you can't know what my secret password is. And it, in your case it will go out and add this uh, repository. Now in my case it already exists so no big deal. Second command you're going to type is sudo apt update and that's just going to make sure you have the very latest version of the catalogs. Goes out, does its little magic. Now the third command is the most important. This is where we install the software like FM, FFmpeg and the PNG interface and the tar and the, the Java. So we're going to do sudo apt install ffmpeg space lib png dash dev space tar space default dash jdk Basically, all we're doing is we're installing FFmpeg and these other programs. Now, in my case, they're already installed, so I just get an error message, but yours are actually going to go out and install all this stuff. Now, we need to copy the AGA Blaster software we downloaded a few minutes ago into our Ubuntu drive, our virtual drive. And that's going to be a very simple command, cp for copy and then slash MNT, we're basically saying mount the drive, mount C, look in this folder, downloads, this is where I put it, if you put it someplace else, type that path name in, AGA convert dash 0.9.5.2 dash bin Dot tgz then put a period at the end a space and a period and that tells it copy that file into the current directory so now if we do a directory you're going to see that uh, AGA convert right there the the, the bin that dot tgz we're going to decompress that file now good operating systems use LHA for compression but these uh, minor almost unknown operating systems like Linux use tar to decompress tarballs. We're going to type tar xvzf then the name of the file aga convert dash 0 0.9.5.2 dash bin dot TGZ. When we hit enter, it unpacks the entire archive and we're good to go. And believe it or not, or not, we're done with the boring Linux stuff. Now we can jump right into converting the videos. Now first thing, we're going to need a video. You're going to notice when I do a directory, I already have some in here. I've got cluck.mp4, I've got Patreon, I've got LGS, I've got a uh, the future was 8-bit video, mine are already moved over. You will have your MP4 or other format videos on your Windows hard drive and we need to copy those into the Unix hard drive here. And we're going to do that by copy cp space forward slash mnt. In my case I keep them on the D drive in a folder called video and then in my particular episode directory, EP68, and then I would do the name of the file. The future was 8bit.mp4, then a space, and then a period to tell it to copy it into this folder. It goes out, it copies over your mp4 file, you are golden. You're ready to modify it. Now here comes the fun part. This is, this is the conversion here. Let's clear some, some window space here. And all we have to do now that we have everything decompressed and running is period slash AV 
AGA convert, AGA CONV, then a space, then we tell it which file we want to play with. We're going to do in equals the future was 8 bit dot mp4 and we're going to say minus minus out equals the future was 8 bit dot cdxl literally that's it for the conversion if you want to use the defaults which are a 320 low res screen it's going to do it in AGA 256 colors 28,000 Hertz stereo audio this will run on most 040 machines just fine or a fast 030 will get beautiful results we hit the enter key and it will go and work its magic and convert that file for you now it does this by stripping out every single frame of the video and converting it into a PNG file and then it strips out the audio into a WAV file. Now after that the FFmpeg software reassembles those PNG files into a CDXL file with standard 8-bit Amiga audio. Works like magic and it only takes a minute or two for a, for a minute or two video. It takes about as long as it takes. Now you'll see when the conversion ends, it tells you exactly what it did. It created a 320 by 180 video, 25 frames per second, right there, 256 colors, low res, 28,000 hertz audio in stereo. Okay, and it created as the file, the future was 8bit.cdxl. So what if this is too high of a resolution and colors and audio to play back on your Amiga. Well, there's a couple command lines you can use that are going to allow you to reduce the colors, reduce the audio, reduce the screen size in order to let it play back on, on a slightly slower AGA machine. Let's take a quick look at some of the common ones we're going to do. Now, here's a couple of common things you can use. Dash dash max dash FPS equals 15. By default, it is a 25 frame per second video that it will create. Now we're telling it to create a 15 frame per second video, which obviously will be smaller and play faster on, on smaller machines. We can adjust some audio settings. In this case, frequency equals 15,000. This is going to uh, play it back at 15,000 Hertz. It'll convert it to 15,000 Hertz, which will be a easier for Paula to play. Now let's look at dash dash max colors equals 128. Now this can be anywhere from 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, or 256 colors. But I need you to be aware that if you do a 16 or 32 color video, that does not mean that this will play back on an ECS machine. That requires ham convert, which we'll be covering in another video. That is still an AGA image requiring an AGA machine to play it back. Now this is going to be a low res screen, but if you want to control the size of the video, we can do dash dash width equals say 240. Now it's going to make a smaller screened video with less pixels to push and easier to play back. And then we can do dash dash height equals say 160. Why not? Oh, no, let's do 140. Now we're overriding the, overriding the automatic settings and we're doing a 240 by 140 image. And lastly, let's change the audio mode. Dash dash audio mode equals mono. So instead of stereo, it's going to do mono. It's going to make the video smaller. Hit enter. This one converts very quickly because it is a small, just a 10 second clip here. Okay, made a nice little small 240 by 140 video. Now we've created these two videos. If we take a look at the directory, 
there's uh, cluck1.cdxl and there's the future was 8bit.cdxl. How do we get these to our Amigas? Now, we could just do another copy command, copy and then the name of the file and then tell it where on the Windows machine to go to and that works just fine. You just do the opposite of the original copy command. But I found a neat little trick that you can go directly to the specific folder that contains your files. But look at the name of this. Canonical group limited dot Ubuntu on Windows underscore seven nine blah 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 inside your app data folder. So you're gonna want to follow this path and I'll I'll put it up on the uh, the screen so you can kind of get an idea where it is. Yours will be a little bit different spelling, different numbers. But in here we find our files. We find our cluck1.cdxl we find our, the future was 8bit.cdxl. We can now drag and drop these right onto a flash drive or a CF card and take them right over to the Amiga. Keep in mind, you cannot put files in this folder that way. They won't be recognized. You have to use the CP copy command to get them in to Unix, but once they're in there, we can get them out, copy them out, using the Windows File Manager. Just makes things a little bit easier. So now you're going to copy these files over to the Amiga, whether it's on a USB flash drive or a CF card or a, however you normally get files over to your Amiga. You're going to bring the video files over, put them on the Amiga. Now you take that AGA Blaster LHA file that we downloaded a few minutes ago and you decompress that on the Amiga. Just use LHA and, and, and uh, let's see, LHA, E, then the name of the file. It'll decompress it. You're gonna wanna rename that file because it'll be called AGA Blaster 0.9.5.2 and that you don't wanna type all that in. So rename that file just to AGA Blaster. Copy it into your C folder. So sys colon C on the Amiga. Now open a shell. Browse to where you keep your videos. Type in AGA Blaster space cluck.cdxl, for example, and it plays back the videos. Let me show you the two that we just created. Come on down to the future was 8 bits for great deals for your home micro. Transform your C64 loading with our market-leading SD2 IEC. Zap your Spectrum loading into shape with the Div MMC Future, including Kempston Interface. Our SD2 BBC provides SD card access for the BBC microcomputer range. Solid-state storage for your pets with the SD2 Pets Future. Games to your VIC-20 and the penultimate plus cartridge, including 35K memory expansion, with all the latest built-in games. A full range of diagnostic testing kits for your Commodore Home Micro. Our great range of cartridge games for the VIC-20 and C64 start at just $9.99. Come on down to the future as 8-bit for great deals for your Home Micro. Here we've got our little chickens, Nugget and Egbert investigating their new friend who wandered into the yard last night. Pretty cool, eh? Even the lower quality cluck video looks really good. Now I have to point this out because it's important. The AGA Blaster and AGA Convert software has 100% the capabilities of creating HAM6, HAM8, Extra Half Bright, and OCS and ECS videos too, and it does a fantastic job of it. It uses a program, a Java program, called Ham Convert that was released with the new version. Well, that works fine under actual Ubuntu uh, Linux, but in this terminal, for some reason, we could not get it to work. I worked with Marcus for two days trying to find a way to get it to work, and it relates to the fact that this version of Ubuntu on Windows is basically just command line based and anytime it tries to access some kind of GUI it has issues and there's like this minor GUI that works along with the ham convert program that doesn't launch properly. Bob's your uncle. It doesn't work. 
but it doesn't matter either. And it doesn't matter because this software is called AGA Convert. The software is not called AGA-OCS-HAM6-HAM8-Convert. Now, it could be called that because then it would really look like a Linux program, but it's mainly for AGA. Now, they're going to get the HAM Convert fixed and working in Windows. We've got some ideas and some plans on how we're gonna uh, get it working, and I'm gonna test it out this week and is gonna be gorgeous on your ECS machine. But for now, AGA only. Now, if you ask me, it's pretty darn amazing that the technology to play back these videos was built right into our Amigas back in 1992, okay? There's, there's nothing that's changed with the hardware. We could all get accelerators back then. We all had AGA on our AGA machines and CDXL actually existed. If they could have just maybe had a higher quality video input, they could have had this quality on the Amigas back in the day. So how does it compare to the AVI to HV software that I've been using? The stuff I did on like Choco Lagoon and the, the, the Legend of Zelda trailer. Um, that software works great for lower end machines. I can run those HAM6 videos on my 68,000 based Amiga 500 and they do okay, they really do okay. You can really see the difference in the quality of the videos compared to AGA Blaster. You saw Rod's videos from the future was 8-bit. Here it is one more time, but converted into HAM 8. Come on down to the future was 8-bit for great deals for your home micro. Transform your C64 loading with our market-leading SD2 IEC. Zap your Spectrum loading into shape with the Div MMC Future, including Kempston Interface. Our SD2 BBC provides SD card access for the BBC microcomputer range. I think you can see, absolutely awesome, beautiful video, but you can see the fringing, and when you compare it to the kind of quality we're able to get out of AGA Blaster, there's no comparison. But remember, we can use AVI to HV on a lot of lower end machines, ECS machines, no problem at all. So there is absolutely a place for that software. I still really enjoy it. I would like to say thanks to my absolutely wonderful patrons. If you'd like to join me and help support the show, I'd really appreciate it. Just go to patreon.com forward slash 10 mark. And for as little as $2 a month, you can sign up and, and help me with uh, making this show uh, grow even more like it's been doing. Here's a little video I did, of course, in AGA Blaster converted. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. So what's my opinion of AGA Blaster? Well, remember, it's still in beta, absolutely. We've got some issues with ham convert. I've got some issues uh, running the 640 by 200 videos. They don't always play back properly under certain circumstances. He's fixing all that. We, we're, he's beta testing it. He's got a couple guys helping beta test it. I'm helping him beta test it now. And we're gonna get all these kinks ironed out. So when version 1.0 comes out, it's going to be sharp. Now, I am hoping, and we did have a discussion, about this being a native Windows 10 program. So thank you for joining me today. Please like and subscribe, but let's th let this handsome character take us out. Take it away, Doug. This is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. What's he doing here? Why am I inside this computer? Signing out.